What's up, YouTubers? Since it's uh, cold and snowy, and I can't snow blow yet because it's still just d downpouring of snow out there. It is Wisconsin in January. I guess I should have expected it. Um, I thought I would shoot a quick video on a topic that affects all of us. And no, it's not world hunger or taxes. <laughs> it's uh, undercut. So when you weld, it can happen in any process where your weld basically fails to deposit enough metal, be it stick or with TIG, you fail to push enough metal in and your plates end up getting like a recessed weld or where the plates are chewed away on the sides. It's a weld defect. We don't want it. I'm going to do a test and create some. We're going to look at it and we're going to talk about it. So let's get into it. So... <laughs> I found these sitting around my shop. I don't know how old they are. They're 332 rods by US Forge, sold at Menards and online, and they're called the Rust Buster. And they're unclassified rods, so these aren't called the 6010 or 6011. And all it says on here is US Forge. Rust Buster, and then it says Satisfaction Guaranteed. So that must mean these are really good. Now, just based on how thin the coating is for Flux, it's obviously got to either be a 6010 or 6011 clone. I'll probably be able to tell by the smell of the rod when I run it. If it smells just like burning paper, it's probably going to be 6010. 6011 smells somewhat similar. Not that you should really be puffing welding fumes. I wouldn't recommend it. Amperage wise, I'm going to go get my little handy chart. So you've seen this in other videos. They have an online version of this now because, you know, I can't be bothered to update to modern technology. But for 332, 6010, 6011, it says uh, 40 to 85. I'm going to try it at a little bit spicy at maybe 70 amps. And I'm going to do a fillet weld, an uphill weld, just to really try and promote some undercut. And I have a feeling this is the right rod in the right position to get some decent undercut so we can see it on camera. If for some reason I fail at that, then I will just manipulate it on flat plate. And trust me, we're going to get some undercut. Ah, oh, that's 6011. Definitely, I don't think it's 6010. Definitely smells like 6011. Um, you know what? I'll just tack it to the table. Why not? All right, let's get this camera repositioned. Let's run an out of control, reckless beat uphill. See if I can't chew away at this a little bit. That rod actually ran a little bit different than 
I would say a 60, uh, 60, 11, 60, 10. It was almost closer to a 60, 13. It's kind of hard to explain how that ran. That's, that's something different there. Interesting. I'll let this cool and then uh, wire wheel the flux off since I don't think we're going to be getting a slag peel on that bad boy. Highly unlikely. For what it was, it didn't run that bad. Hmm. Well, I'll show you here. Let me uh, reposition. So there's some, if you look up here, I don't want to burn my fingers. In there, there's some. And then along this toll line, there's a little bit, but that's also just flux that needs to get cleaned off. There's no question that that right here is undercut. Let's see if we got any in the top. Yeah, I mean, I, I was holding about twice the length of an arc gap that you want. I mean, I tightened it up here just to see how it ran normally. Why don't I up it, uh, let's go 85 amps and I'll try it again up here and see what happens. At some point it, it will undercut it a little bit more. Yeah, we got a little bit of undercut there. <laughs> a little bit of blow through too. All right, I'll let that cool. And I'll weld it on the backside too, you know what, why not? So let's take a look here. The start of it here, I had way too long of an arc. We do have some undercut in this little vicinity here where it chewed away at the plate. Most of what you see here like this, that actually would come off. It's just flux that's adhered to the side. A little bit more uh, wire wheeling, that would come off. Now up here, we definitely have signs of it. See how this rod, it like has a lip and edge to catch there. Same thing down here. And of course running so hot that burned a hole through the plate, which at uh, 85 amps with a pretty high dig setting, you can imagine it would. Now the flat plate position actually undercutted more than the uphill. So we have clear signs of it here. No question, this is all undercut. The bottom plate less so, but this whole line up here has undercut. What you're looking at is, undercut is really two things. It's both underfilling, and it could be evidence that your arc gap, your distance your rod is from the plate is far too long, and the arc is wandering or chewing away at the plate without depositing metal. Like this right here, had I lowered the amperage and slowed down and just let the rod fill, you wouldn't have that much of undercut. There wouldn't be any. It would be more or less smooth and you wouldn't chew away at the plate. So undercut, if your amperage is too high, you're going to get a lot of it. If your arc gap is too long and not nice and tight, you're going to get undercut. 
Um, with TIG, you're going to see undercut mainly running very high amperages in a decent arc gap, and you just don't fill uh, enough filler to replace what you washed away. I'm actually kind of surprised that this didn't come out worse. I mean, I was holding about twice the length of an arc gap that you would normally want for uphill welding and running pretty high amperage, and it didn't really chew away. Since I haven't mentioned it before, I'll mention it now. The main reason you don't want undercut is because if you look at the thickness of this plate, this is about 3 sixteenths, maybe eighth, somewhere in there. Any amount that's chewed into your base material is a reduction in the thickness of that material. Well, you can imagine, it wouldn't take, like imagine this whole plate was welded all the way down with undercut on the top toe. Well, your base metal is now no longer eighth or three sixteenths or thereabout. It's thinner, which means that if this piece is stressed, it's likely going to break right at the toe line there where it's been chewed away. So undercut is very undesirable, primarily from a standpoint of the base metal reduction in thickness, and it gives a perfect place for a crack to start. So anytime you see like a badly undercut joint and something failed, that it's going to, trust me, it'll crack right along that toe line. It's not going to crack up here. It's not going to crack through the middle of the weld. It'll crack right on that toe line. So under all circumstances, you want to avoid undercut as much as possible. And it's really pretty simple. You just want to keep your arc gap close. So in the case of this, like stick rod, I'll show you here. Normally, like on a flat position where you're dragging it, I would, depending on rod, I'll either have the flux touch as I'm welding or slightly, you're talking, you know, a sixteenth of an inch or quarter, half of a millimeter, not much, a small amount. When you're all the way out here where you're like eighth to quarter inch arc gap, you're going to just promote undercut, excessive arc voltage, and excessive heat input. So you want to keep that arc tight. You want to bring it into the joint. But yeah, just by keeping a tight arc and then your travel speed, you don't want to be you know, like, okay, I'm going to move forward fast, slow down forward fast. Like, you want to keep it nice and slow. By keeping it slow, it gives the rod time to melt off and deposit metal so that you don't get what's basically under fill. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, it comes down to a lot of practice to get things right. You just have to take your time. And if you do get under a cut, you, you got to go back and fix it if you care about your work. So one way to fix it would be to take a small grinder wheel like a flap disc, just cut a line about the depth of the undercut and then weld over it with a nice bead. Yeah, you'll have two beads where one might have sufficed, but that's oftentimes better than leaving the undercut. Keep in mind, the more metal you put down, the more your plate's going to warp. I tacked this pretty close to 90 and it's still there. If I went back and just kind of cleaned all this up and ran more passes on this thin of material, it may end up pulling and warping it. So it's also something to keep in mind. Generally, it's a defect that you don't want to leave though. But, you know, we're human. It's unavoidable in some circumstances. It's just know what to do with it. So with that said, if you got any comments, questions, concerns, Leave them down in the box, you know where to put them. Otherwise, thanks for sticking around for this video. I hope you learned something, and until next time, thanks.